Hey Sparks, welcome to another week of Awana. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to learn some more verses? I hope you are, and I hope you've been working really hard on those verses every single week so that you're learning all the different things in God's Word, you're earning your jewels and your badges, you're able to earn up those Awana dollars. Man, I hope that you're doing an awesome job with all that stuff. Now, depending on what class you're in, what book you're in, you're learning something new this week. If you're in hang glider, you're learning Joshua 24, 24. If you're in wing runner, you're learning Ephesians 4, 32. And if you're in sky stormer, this is the passage for you. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 2. Now, we're going to learn this verse in just a second. First, I want to ask you a question. What would your dream home be like? So, when I was a kid, we used to get these different catalogs in the mail. And the catalogs would have all this information on how to decorate your house. There would be all these coolly designed rooms with awesome stuff. And then sometimes we would get entire flyers in the mail showing us what they call home layouts, which would show you where all the bedrooms would be, where your pool would go, where your uh, giant movie theater inside your home would be. Cool stuff like that, right? And there was this TV show called Cribs, where you could watch other people's houses. They'd show these really insane houses that people had, and they looked so cool. So when I was your age, I wanted to have this really awesome house with these awesome decorations. I thought, wouldn't it be so cool if I had tons of rooms in my house, if I had this awesome kitchen, but most importantly, if I had like an incredible backyard? Yeah, I want to have this incredible backyard with a huge swimming pool, a big soccer field in the back. Man, that would have been awesome. Well, today we are going to learn about the home that Jesus is preparing for us right now. And hey, it might have some of your dream home uh, pieces as well. Are you ready to learn? Here we go. John 14, 1 through 2. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So in this verse, Jesus is talking, and we just celebrated Easter, right? And Easter is the celebration of Jesus rising from the dead. Of course, for Jesus to rise from the dead, he first had to die. Jesus was talking to his disciples the night before he was going to die in this verse. He had already told them, hey guys, guess what? I'm leaving. And that made his disciples really sad. Have you ever had a friend tell you, hey, I'm moving away? That makes you sad, right? It's your best friend, your closest friend. You go over to their house, you play video games, or you play in the backyard, or you guys like to eat snacks together and stuff like that. For them to move away would be really sad. That's what's happening with the disciples. Jesus is telling them, I'm leaving. And they say, no, Jesus, you can't go. Not only is he telling them that he's leaving, not, not that he's like moving away, he's saying he's gonna die. They're like, Jesus, don't die. We want you to stick around. We want you to be with us. But Jesus says, no, it's time to go. I'm going to die. I'm going to raise from the dead. And then I'm going to go up into heaven and be with God. And you guys, I'm leaving you behind. Now, in another part of this entire section where Jesus is talking, he tells them he wouldn't leave them totally alone, but that he would give them what we call the Holy Spirit to be with them. Well, this is awesome, guys, because here's what's cool. If Jesus was still here on earth, he's just one person, and he could only hang out with so many people at a time. That's how it works when you're one person, right? But you know what's really cool? The Holy Spirit can be with every believer all at the same time. Meaning, if you are a child of God, if you've placed trust in Jesus for your salvation, God is with you right now through the Holy Spirit. And He's helping you each and every day. He's helping you to understand God's Word. He's reminding you of what's right and what's wrong. He's giving you 
basically like superpowers so that you can serve others. We call those spiritual gifts. And we'll talk about them more another day. Man, it's really cool what the Holy Spirit is doing through our life. And the Holy Spirit is working with us because Jesus left. And so Jesus is telling them, don't be sad. I know you're sad that I'm going to leave. I know you're sad that I'm going to die. But I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm going to ascend into heaven to be with God. And I'm not leaving you alone. I'm sending you the Holy Spirit to be with you. But there was one really more cool thing that Jesus had to say. And it's right here. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. Man, boys and girls, this makes me so excited. Jesus is up in heaven right now. And in heaven, he is waiting for us to come back. He has pre prepared a place for us to live. Now, I don't know how detailed that's going to be. I don't know if that means that you get a mansion and I get a mansion, or if it means there's going to be one big mansion and we're all going to get a bunch of rooms. But I'm not going to lie to you. Some days, I just sit back and think of how awesome my home might, might be one day in heaven. Man, I like to imagine that I could possibly have this big, big place to live, with tons of food, let me tell you. It's going to be a party, eating tons of food every day at my place in heaven, if that's what God has planned. And you know what else? Since I was your age, I always thought it'd be the coolest thing ever to have, like, a pet dinosaur. And you know what? I kind of went back and forth on what kind of pet dinosaur I wanted. Sometimes it was a T-Rex. Sometimes it was a Velociraptor or a Utah Raptor. Sometimes I wanted a Brachiosaurus. And now I'm just content to have all the dinosaurs. I think that's the best thing that I could possibly get. Tons of dinosaurs, but also just tons of animals. And not just a big backyard with a soccer field in the back. Man, I would love to have this awesome, like, forest or jungle where I could go exploring and see all these different animals. Do I think that heaven's going to be like that? I don't really know. I don't know what God has planned for me. But here's what I do know. God is preparing this awesome home for me to live in and for you to live in. And when we get at, when we actually get there, it's going to blow our minds. It's going to be so much more incredible than anything we've ever thought of. And I don't know if we're all going to share the same house together or if we're all going to have our own houses or what's going to happen. But I do know this. I'm going to love heaven. And it's not because of the dinosaurs. Maybe. I don't know if they'll be there. It's not because of all the food I might have in my house. It's not because of a soccer field in the backyard. No, the real reason that I'm going to love heaven is because Jesus is there. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to see Jesus, to see God to worship Him, to spend time with Him, to actually talk to Him. It's going to be incredible. So boys and girls, this is a cool verse. I like this verse, and I wish you the best luck to you, those of you in Skystormer who are studying it. But man, I hope that all of you get really excited about what God is preparing for you. And remember, the best part of heaven out of everything else is that Jesus is going to be there. Boys and girls, I hope you have an awesome week, and I can't wait to talk to you next time. God bless.